Hi, welcome back to another Archicad Speed modeling tutorial by ASM Tech Base. My name is Carsten MD. Please subscribe to my channel so other Archicad users can benefit too by putting my rankings up on all the search engines. All right, before I jump in, I'd like to show you just quickly the three key things we actually learned today. The main one is obviously how we use this curtain wall, very clever as um, like a roof for this pergola. So you can see this is definitely still a curtain wall. Let me just select this quickly. So if I select here, you can see it is a curtain wall. Now this is one thing we definitely look at. Now the next thing is, I like to show you how you actually then um, rotate them because you can see I started there straight in the middle and then I went either way, just slightly rotating them. Okay, so that's the second bit. And the third bit is how you obviously then, maybe better shown on the 2D, how you can really sort of, you know, go along this nice spline where the path is um, with the pretty much the exact distance from each other. Okay, so let's get started. All right, I did a little preparation. So I got a just a simple pathway. I got a spline in the middle of the pathway and I just got a slab. So if you go into 3D, you can see that's all I have for now. Now to create this um, curtain wall, I just did a half an arc which is sort of, you know, if I drag this over to the curtain, we'll see it's sort of overlapping a little bit. Okay, let me escape. Now the first step is to just simply draw a curtain wall. So you go to the curtain wall, obviously you add, you know, any of your settings you want the curtain wall to be, and that's it pretty much. I don't have to explain too much here, so we click OK. Then we can use the curved option for the curtain wall. So I'm going here now, hover over my half arc to get the middle of it. There you go. I click and I simply draw my curtain wall. All right, let's go and have a look. So we got in 3D, beautiful, this curtain wall now. Now the next step is we actually use now to create this um, shape I want. We go and draw a roof. Now the roof setting here is very simple again. I, as example, have, um, it's actually not important the size you have of the roof in regard to thickness, okay? But you have to have a look at the, the angle of degree you have. So I'm starting with a minus 20. I put it actually on four and a half above zero. And there's a reason to it. Let me go out of this because that curtain wall, let me have a look, curtain wall. We go here, we select the curtain wall. So the curtain wall is nine and a half. So if I got the roof at four and a half, it's exactly in the middle of the curtain wall. Great, so I've got the setting of the roof. What I do is next, I just start drawing the roof. So I'm clicking from here to here. I want it that way. And then you just have to make sure it overlaps the curtain wall. That's all it needs to do. Let me have a look in 3D. It's probably easier to see what's happening. Okay, as you can see now, this is the, the roof, minus 20 degrees. And if I select this, you can see the construction line of the roof is exactly where this curtain wall is. Okay, now it's going minus 20. What I do is next, I want another one with plus 20. So let me go and go back here. The easiest way to do this really, be really, uh, instead of redrawing it, just copy and you paste, paste it back in. Okay, click outside and let me draw a frame so it'll be easier. So if I go into 3D now again, you will see I've got, well, you can't see now, but I do have two roofs. So it doesn't matter which one you select, just select one of them. And we will change now from minus 20, we change to 20. Take the minus out, hit enter. There we go. The next step is quite simple. We got to cut this now. Now there's a couple of options and I'll show you which one you should not use first. I've got this option here. Let me select the top roof and I select the curtain wall. And then I have this tool here called Trim Elements to Roof Shell. So that's to do with the shell and roof. So if I do this now, because some people might think, okay, that's quite cool, I can do this. And that does cut quite nicely. But what you don't get is, have a look, it doesn't add a frame, you know, you got no frame there, see? So that's not very nice. Let me undo this step. Okay, now if I do a different option, 
So I'm now actually select the roof. I go and select the curtain wall. Now, instead of this option here, I'm using the roof extra options and I go to crop to single plane roof. Now the option you got up here is you can crop element to top or to base. Now I did select the top one. So let me go crop element to top roof and you just hit crop. Now what it does is you can see already it adds automatically a frame along our curtain wall. How cool is that? That is very useful. So the same thing doing again at the bottom. So select the curtain wall, select the bottom roof which I pretty just used to, to, you know, as a cutting element. So I'm going here and we go again, design, crop it again. Just make sure you now obviously crop element base, crop. Okay, and there you go. So you've got beautiful framed curved curtain wall. Right. Now the next step is, let me take a copy of this curtain wall now. And then I open this section, which is A1. Okay, so you can see that's the one I copied now. What you have to do is you select this and we rotate this. Okay, this is great. I can now move this down. Let me move this down to about there. Okay, let's go back to 2D and see how that looks. Oh, okay, I think there's something I have to do because we can't really see the curtain wall. So just select the curtain wall. There we go. And let's change the settings of it. So if I go here to uh, curtain wall system, and then you just go down to show projection to floor plan range, and I want to show the entire elements. Click OK. And now you can see the curtain wall. At its fullest. Okay, cool. Now we can move this now. Now, actually, before I move this, you probably notice you see that this is obviously not exactly in the middle of you know the frames we got. You can still alter them. So, if as example I want to move this a bit more in, you might have to measure. I'll show you something. Let's go there, roughly the you know the longest distance is roughly. Let me make it six six. You know, for purpose of this tutorial. So I'm selecting this. I'll go in here and this distance here is actually now the height. So I had six, six. Let me do three of them at two, 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 zero, zero. And instead of fixed sizes, best division and go. Okay. Let's see what happens. And as you can see, it's not quite in the middle yet because there's one more setting. I forgot about that setting. It's very important. Let's go back. Open that again to edit, and there's a setting where we down here, yes, down here it is. You see that's the height at the moment from the ground level. So just put that on zero, and then it should actually do the you know the height because we rotated it is the height now. It should divide it by two to best division, which is roughly you know six six. So let's hit OK and see what happens. Ah, look at this, it's perfect. Let me go into 3D to make sure this is looking good. Yes, there you go. So I still did alter and change the curtain wall. Okay, so that's that's the nice thing with this um, clever use of curtain wall because it's still editable. All right, so that looks much better now. So next step is I can now move this. Now what's important, you need to rotate this to be perpendicular to your spline. Okay, as close as possible. So let me take um, just a normal line. You know, this is fairly perpendicular to um, my spline. So next bit obviously is we take this and we like to rotate this. Let's go there, straight, and just go to that line. Okay, so this is great. So if I go into 3D, okay, let's see what's happening here. Yes, so we got this now. Nice. So I can now go along this um, path along the spline. But before I do this, there's something else because I like to rotate them often to make sure I rotate them nicely and also, you know, a certain um, angle by degree. We need a reference to actually be able to rotate them around. 
all I did is add something I can use to actually rotate this curtain wall now. Plus also, you know, in this case, you can see it's also good because it actually is a lot more steady in the ground. So all I did is I used uh, the morph, created a circle, extended the circle a little bit to make it actually a volume. And then I connected this to the curtain wall. So you can see it's, um, if I unsuspend groups, it's now grouped. First, obviously go along the spline before I rotate this. So all we do is now we select, make sure it is grouped and we multiply this along the spline path, which is actually quite hard to get because I did create the path with the actually here with the wall. So let me show you if I click here, see that's a wall in 3D. And that's a problem because sometimes it doesn't pick the slime correctly. So let me turn this layer off. So we just go hide this layer. That leaves me now obviously with the spline only. So let's try this again. So we go here and we multiply uh, increment and spread, pick path before input and rotate to path. So now it's quite easy. They only can select the spline. So that's definitely better. So you click once, it recognizes the spline path go in the middle there, click again, and now we can go along here perpendicular. Let me get a little bit um, of a gap, click again. And now because I clicked again, it told it now the distance it needs in between. So now I can just go and spread this along here. There we go. So you click again when you're finished. Okay, we'll calculate obviously a little bit, you know, there's quite a lot of curtain walls. Great, let's deselect and we have a look how this is looking now. That's pretty good. The path is not there, so let me go to working. So there's my path back and you can see already how it looks. This is pretty cool. And all we have to do is now, we can now select, let me go in the middle here, this one, and I can just rotate that now. It I'm not sure if this is a bug, but while you're here, look, I show you. So because this is all um, grouped, I clicked it, and so it did obviously select everything, including the foundation here. Now, if I rotate this, let me show you. So I go and rotate, uh, rotate. You gotta pick obviously the surface. So let me go over here. So you click down here. And see, I can click this surface now. So that's the whole point I'm having that too. And I click again, go up here, and now I turn it a little bit. Let me have a look what happens. Yeah, see, it doesn't work. I thought this would happen. It's very odd now. Watch this. Let me suspend the groups. And we actually just select that curtain wall. And I do it again. So I go now, move, rotate, and I pick, you know, the plane where I wanted to rotate around. So click there. And now the next bit is I go there, click again, go up, click again, go a little bit to the left, click again. Now this time I did rotate. So I think that's a bug in this software. Interesting, I might have to tell Graphisoft about this. If you need to be more accurate, I'll show you what you need to do. Let me select this one, uh, on suspend groups, hit F5, because now you have this all by yourself. Okay, so let me now just deselect, suspend groups. Now we can click the curtain wall just by itself, not connected to the foundation. So let me rotate this. We rotate, there we go. And I pick a plane, which is this one here. Click again, and obviously to, to find out the middle, see there it is. You know, I don't have my slab in the way now. And you click again, go up, and now it rotates exactly in the middle of this foundation arc. To do this more accurate, I just I just did rotation by a certain degree. I think I did every five degree or every three degrees and I went that way and I went that way. So the finished product will look like this then. As you can see here, I started with the middle. There you go. So I rotated this 
that way by three or five degrees come in by three or five the same this three or five the other way and as you can see i kept going either side let's make this 10 degrees 10 degrees 15 15 doing it this way with a more exact number looks actually pretty cool i think so if you go and move around you can see that um, the finished product and i really like it i hope you learned heaps in this tutorial and as always i hope to see you back next time bye for now